it's pretty safe to say that things out in the world at this point in time are pretty rough for lots of people, and many are looking for ways of making some extra income. One of the great ways of doing that is to take a look at actually building or maintaining websites for clients. Now, you may be thinking, I don't have the money, Paul, to be able to do this, but today I'm going to show you all free tools to do pretty much every aspect of running your own business, from designing to maintaining to dealing with contracts, payments, and so much more. Everything is totally free. Some may have costs when you make money, but all of these are free options to get you started and have more than enough in place to help you start making money. So let's start off with the very, very first part. We'll start off with the more fun stuff and then we'll take a look at the legal and the businessy kind of things a little later through this video. So first of all, when someone comes along, you're gonna to want to be able to create some kind of design prototype or mock-up for them. For this, I've got Figma as the first choice. However, we do have a couple of other options which I would recommend also check out to find out what works best for you. But Figma is free to get started at this point in time. That might change now Adobe's bought them but it lets you get up and running incredibly quickly. You can do all your designs, your prototyping, you can get all your ideas out onto your artboard, and then you can supply this to the client. You can get feedback going back and forth, all using Figma, and then once you've designed things, you're then ready to move on to the next phase. The next tool I would recommend checking out if Figma is not for you, or you just want some alternatives, would be Lunacy from Icons 8. The difference with this is it does have some features currently missing, but not ones that you would find would stop you from actually being able to build your prototypes and design things. These are coming though in the near future, I've been assured by the people behind Lunacy. One of the nice things about Lunacy though is you don't have to use this online. You can download it on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So if you're a Linux user, you're not left out in the cold. And then you can start building, designing, prototyping with the benefit of having tons of icons and images and photographs all included directly inside the editor itself. It makes it really quick and simple to get up and running, designing things, and just pulling in placeholder information so your end user, your client, potential client, can see exactly what it's going to look like. And then you can replace all that with the real images. Nice to see that. Check out Lunacy from Icons 8. So next on the list would be Penpot, another design and prototyping tool you may want to take a look at checking out. One of the nice things about this is, while it doesn't have necessarily all of the features that you may have in some of these more established tools, they've just raised $8 million in funding. And this is going to help them speed up and ramp up the process of bringing out those key features that you may need. So I would recommend checking out Penport. It is an exciting looking project and definitely worth your time to try it out and see if it resonates with you as a designer. Now, once your client has approved that design, what's next? Well, you're probably going to want to build the design for them. For this, I would probably recommend starting off with WordPress. Why? Because it's absolutely free. And other than the cost of some hosting and a domain, which you can pass on to your client, there's no cost for you whatsoever. And you can easily use a local development environment to be able to set things up, test things, get your skills up to speed. And obviously, there are a billion tutorials out there on YouTube on how to get started and how to get really, really far using WordPress. So WordPress would probably be my first choice for most users. However, you may not want to go down the route where you have to deal with hosting and domains, and all those kinds of things. So this is where maybe Webflow would be an alternative option. Now Webflow gives you a visual way of building your site designs. And the nice thing with Webflow is, in the same way as with WordPress, you don't have to spend any money on this while you're building the site for a client. And only once they've approved it and they're happy and then you want to launch the site, do you then need to pay. And as always, you'd be passing that on to the client. One of the benefits of using something like Webflow, you don't have to deal with maintenance and updates of the server and all those things. And you don't generally have to worry about an update causing a problem where you may have that problem with WordPress. So check out Webflow. There's an abundance of great tutorials, including the Webflow education channel itself, which has some of the best online tutorials on the platform whatsoever, bar none. So check out Webflow, and like I said, not gonna cost you anything to get up to speed, to learn how to use it, follow those tutorials, and then pass the costs on to the client when they launch the site. 
Now, you may hit some limitations when you're working with something like WordPress and you want to go beyond the design skills that you may currently have. You may not be happy dealing with dabbling with code and CSS and all these kinds of things. Then I would recommend taking a look at Thema Lite. It's absolutely free to use. It is somewhat crippled, but it does have more than enough to get you up to speed and kind of bring your chops up so you kind of build those skills, build that confidence in it. And then if you want to upgrade to the pro version or the full version, you can do, or you can just take those skills that you've learned and manually start doing this inside your theme of choice. Now, before we move on and take a look at things like themes and other things like that for the other sides of designing things, what about if you've got your client and you want to be able to have an easy way of sharing files and information back and forth? Well, this is where a tool like Dropbox can come in incredibly handy. Again, they have a relatively generous free plan, at which point you can sign up and you can give a free link to your customer, your client, and you can share files back and forth as if it's a normal drive on your computer. This is a great way of being able to very quickly and easily update things back and forth between you and the client and not have to worry about sending things via email or using other kind of methods where you send files back and forth. Everything can be in one centralized folder, which you share between both of your computers. It makes life really easy. Another option would be to take a look at pCloud. Now, pCloud is generally a paid for platform, but they do also have a relatively generous free plan, which you can check out. It's not that well advertised on the site, but it is there. So you have a very similar setup where you can share information back and forth. However, pCloud is probably a little bit more niche. And if you want to take a look at something that's really, really easy for most users, Dropbox would probably be my recommendation just for that ease of use factor. But you can then share files back and forth with relative ease. Now, sticking with the design aspect and moving back over to WordPress, chances are once you've kind of decided what you're going to build and you've worked with a client to get that design, you're going to be using some form of theme. You want a starting point that's going to make life easy, but also expands to give you lots and lots of headroom. This is where I would first of all recommend checking out Bloxy. Now, there's a premium version of this which adds more functionality, but the free version has so much in it that I think you should check it out just to see exactly how much is in there, including things like a custom header and footer builder, the ability to customize the design of lots of different aspects. And again, if you want to go further and your client needs more, then you can take a look at the premium version. But the free version gives you so much straight out of the box that I would highly recommend checking it out. Now, if you don't want something quite as comprehensive as Bloxy, you may want to take a look at Generate Press. And at first glance, you may look at this and go, well, it doesn't really have a huge amount in it. But it's a very, very fast, very, very stripped back theme that if you want to use this as a great, clean, quick starting point, I would recommend checking out Generate Press. Pair that up with the free version of Generate Blocks, and you have a pretty comprehensive set of tools. And the nice thing is, if you want to get into using dynamic data with tools like Advanced Custom Fields, which again has a free version, the free version of Generate Blocks allows you to start working with dynamic data and gives you a great starting point for creating more unique bespoke packages. Therefore, you could ultimately charge your client more money and then you could take a look at reinvesting that back into your business. The next option would be if you want to pair up a builder like Elementor free with their free theme, the Hello theme, then you're going to have a great visual builder plus the fact you're going to have a header and footer builder inside the Hello theme. And this is a great visual way of being able to just simply drag and drop designs together. There's so many application plugins and so on out there that if you can't do it inside the free version of Elementor, chances are you can find a plugin to do it. And if you want more like dynamic data and more sort of robust theme and template editing, then you may want to take a look at Elementor Pro. However, like I say, these are things you can look at on a project by project basis and pass that cost on to the client if they need more and you need more to get the job done. But to get started and to get you up and running or just to hone your skills before you start looking for paying clients, I would suggest taking a look at a tool like Elementor if you want that visual drag and drop way of working with building websites. So now you've got to the point where you've designed the site and you need that kind of two-way feedback between you and the client and phone calls and emails are just a bit of a pain in the proverbial. How do we go about dealing with that? Well, this is where I would recommend checking out the Atarim platform. This has a paid for version, but the free version allows you to just simply go ahead, 
pull in a site without adding any code or anything to the site itself, no plugins, nothing at all. You can simply do this directly inside the dashboard of Asafim. And then you can have conversations going back and forth where your client can just interact with the actual content itself, leave you notes and messages, and everything is contained inside the one platform. It makes just chasing up exactly what's going on, monitoring things, sharing information, getting feedback, approving pages, approving sites, all those things, all inside the one platform. If you want to see exactly what tasks are going on, if you've got one project or 10 projects on the go, you can use the Kanban board inside Atrium to easily see exactly where you are in the process, what needs to be done, and then move things between the various different stages, all done visually without spending a single dime. Check out Atrium. Now, We've covered the more fun stuff. We do need to cover some of the more legal orientated things. One of the things you're going to want to do when you start working with a client is you have a contract in place. You need to have something there that says what you're going to do, what they need to do for you, and so on and so forth. Now, this can be something that I would always recommend getting legal advice. And maybe where you are in the country, in the world, you can get like 30 minutes of legal advice, an hour of legal advice for free. It is worth using that with someone that understands contractual law. But what I would suggest is take a look at the option for the contract killer. This is a great way of starting things off. And even though it says there's a uh, sort of contract killer templates, which you can download in various different formats, it is actually all just listed here. So if you want to see the full contract, you can see it and you can just literally take it from there and you can then modify it for your own use case. And the nice thing with this is, is not tons and tons of legal jargon. It's in human speak. So not only can you understand what the heck's going on, but also when you hand this off to a client and they take a look at it, they're not going to get terrified at this 15 page contract and just go, yeah, I'll pass. I'll try someone else. This is something that I honestly think you should be really mindful of whenever you create any kind of documentation. So check out the contract killer links down below so you can check that out. But like I say, always get legal advice because this was written in the UK. It's a starting point. It's not a be all and end all. You'll need to modify, but keep it simple, keep it clear, keep it concise and get it checked out. Taking one step back again, before you even start working with a client, you're going to need to have some kind of way of giving them a proposal. Tell them how much it's going to cost them, what's included, all those kinds of things. We're going to take a look at Docspo. Now, Docspo is a paid platform, but there is a free version to start off with. So you can at least start creating some proposals, winning those proposals. And then if you need to reinvest, you can reinvest into a tool like Docspo. But like I say, this allows you to create those proposals, get them approved, get the job in, get the contract signed up and then start building the prototypes and moving on. So you've pretty much got almost everything you need so far, but there's still more on this list. Actually, lots more. You've got them to agree to your proposal. You've got the money ready to go into your bank. But how the hell do you get the money? Now, obviously, you could go about just having a check or having it transferred to your bank account, and that works perfectly fine. But you ideally want to have some kind of way of tracing and monitoring exactly what's going on. Now, we've got a couple of suggestions in this section, and this is going to be dependent upon where you are in the world as to whether you can get access to these recommendations. So first of all, if you're in the USA or Canada and you want to have a whole setup for dealing with your accounting, your invoicing, all those kinds of things, I would recommend checking out Wave. Unfortunately, about two years ago, they stopped working or making it open to anybody outside those countries. If you had an account prior to that, you can carry on using it for the time being. But if you are in the US or in Canada, check out Wave apps because this is a really solid platform for monitoring, maintaining, and making sure everything is handled from your accounts, from your invoices, outstanding payments, all those kinds of things. You can, if you want to, also connect it up to Stripe so you can handle the payment side of things and have all that thing monitored together. Now, if you're not in one of those countries and you still want to be able to create invoices and take payments, then PayPal is probably one of your better options. Is it perfect? No. But what it does do is it opens you up to an international market pretty much where you can take payment in your preferred payment uh, sort of currency, or you can use it in the currency of the country that you're working with. And then it gets uh, sort of converted via PayPal. Now, obviously, there's going to be charges for this, but the ease of use does mean that it makes it simple and straightforward. And if you go for the business account, which again is free, 
You can then also go ahead and you can create customers. You can send invoices out and you can track those and you can have simple payment links and so on. It is a really simple way of doing all those kinds of things. Now, if you don't have or you don't want to use PayPal, you can also take a look at Stripe. Now, Stripe, again, is very similar to what you can do with PayPal. You can create invoices on here. You can set up an account. You can have customers. You can track all those things. You can take those payments and you have all kinds of reports and summaries and everything else going on. Very similar to what you have with PayPal. So there's three different options you can use to handle payments, invoicing and customers. So that's really, really useful to do. Now, when you're building websites for clients, they don't always have all the content that you want or need. So sometimes you need to start looking for things like video or images. Even if you just prototype it, you want to use some images so you can kind of get that look and feel across to them. You don't want to go around to the pay-in for stock images and stock video. So I've got three sites I would recommend you check out that have tons of great resources. First of all, and probably my favorite, is Pexels. This is a great place to find those photos and videos. And the nice thing with this is you can go ahead and you can find out what's trending. You can create filters inside here. So if you look for a particular kind of photo, for example, we'll say city. We can come into our filters. We can say we want a specific orientation, so we only want horizontal. We can choose the sizes we want available. We can even drop in a hex code for the color or colors that we want to have included in that so they have that brand consistency across our design. Check out Pexels. It's a really solid platform that has thousands, if not millions, of images on there and so many high-quality ones you may want to use to get started. Next up, and probably one of the most widely known, is Unsplash. Now, Unsplash, again, is another great resource. So, for example, if you wanted to search for something like abstract buildings, we can search for abstract architecture, and you can see there's an abundance of images inside there. Now, the unfortunate thing is there's also a lot of advertising going on on here as well for things like iStock and so on. So just be careful when you are looking for things that you don't accidentally look at when the, the paid options or when the adverts or so on. But with a little bit of time and effort, you can find some amazing look images on there. The final one will be stocksnap.io. And they are, again, an abundance of images on here. So if you want something like popular images, you can find any kind of popular image that you want. Want one of a deer? We'll find one of a deer. There you go. You can go ahead. You can download this. You can add it to your favorites. Again, just be careful that you don't end up clicking on one of these paid options for Shutterstock and so on. But at the end of the day, they've got to make money somehow and adverts and so on seems to be one of the main ways. So take your time and you're going to find probably great images to do most of what you want on any of those three platforms. Now, once you've found the image or images that you want, chances are you're going to need to edit them in various different ways. Maybe just crop them, resize them, even go around the, the whole process of fully editing them and combining various different things into making quite comprehensive graphics. But again, you don't want to shell out for something like Photoshop or anything like that. Well, I've got you covered there as well. So first of all, if you basically want Photoshop Lite or, well, Photoshop Online, should we say, then check out Photop or Photopia. I don't know how you actually say this. But you can go ahead and you can open up a range of different formats. And you basically have a Photoshop-based browser version, but also with the ability to pull in basic starting templates if you want to use them. You can see we've got an abundance of different templates. We can say, well, I like the look of this one. You can click to open that up. And now you can start working with this and editing it. And as you can see, you basically have Photoshop with ad sponsorship on the one side. If you want to create an account, you can do. If you want to pay for it, you can do. But you don't need to. So if you want to work with this, and the nice thing with Photop is you have control over PSD formats. So you can do lots of different things, even some of the more advanced things that you can do inside Photoshop. Photop can actually do that for you all inside the browser. It's quick, it's snappy, it's free, and it's definitely worth checking out. Next up, if you prefer to have something on your own computer, you may want to check out GIMP, which is a image manipulation tool in the same kind of vein as Photoshop. But this is going to give you an abundance of options inside you, all inside a totally free platform, which you can easily come in and start working with, creating content, designing things, editing things, whatever you want to do, but all offline on your own computer without the need to be connected to the internet anyway. So if you want a kind of Photoshop alternative for free, check out GIMP. Now, the next one that I want to talk about is Pixlr. Now, Pixlr has two different versions. You've got Pixlr X and Pixlr E. Pixlr X and E, they're basically one is more of a kind of layout tool, and the other one is more like a Photoshop tool. So for this example, you're probably going to want to go for Pixlr E, but I would recommend checking both of them out because they both have some really, really nice features. 
So again, you can see from the interface, it's very, very much like working with Photoshop online. On the left-hand side, you've got an abundance of different tools you can access. You can also go ahead and you've got options across the top. You want to click on any of these, you can see we've got context options, we've got help over everything. Basically, you can do whatever you want inside here to edit, manipulate, customize, create original graphics, and so much more. So check out Pixlr E and Pixlr X because I think they are both bringing huge amounts of value to if you want to work with images and you don't have any money to spend on it. So my fourth one is a bit of a wild card because it's not limited to just basically edited images. And you don't get the same level of control you would have in any of those first three options I've shown you. But this is Canva. Now you've probably heard of Canva, but if not, you can easily edit images, basic editing at least. But what it allows you to do is very quickly use templates to customize those. So you could do things like YouTube thumbnails, banners for Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram and all those kinds of things. So if you wanted to create a, an advertising aspect to your business, or marketing and promotion and things like that, that you wanted to sell to potential clients, Canva could be a great starting point. And again, once you start to make some cash off it, you can invest in the monthly subscription and unlock all of the features that you kind of have, which there is a lot of features, including they've started to open up for web design. So you may want to check out the whole web design side of things because it could be a quick and easy way of getting a simple brochure site up for a client without having to spend a huge amount of time, effort or money and all done inside the one platform. So check out Canva. I think you might be surprised when you take a look at some of the things you can actually do on the platform. Okay, so you've done the design, you've got the contract in place, you've done everything, you've launched the website. How do you carry on making more cash? Well, there's obviously things like hosting and domain registration, but let's be honest, that can be a bit of a pain. And if you're using WordPress, there's several different ways in which you can have residual income coming in. And this is just scratching the surface of what you could do. So first of all, we're gonna take a look at backup migration and just making sure that everything is backed up regularly and you have full control over that, whether you wanna do it manually or you wanna do it automatically. I would recommend my favorite, the one that I've been using for a very long time myself, is WP Vivid Backup and Migration. You can use the free version. You can use this to do all your backups and you can back this up offsite to things like Dropbox. If you want to work with pCloud, you can do that, but you do need the paid version of WP Vivid Backup. You can create stage insights and you can push things over all on the same server and push things back when you're ready. I've created videos on how you can do some of this and I will link those in the description below. But this is one of those things that you can easily make recurring income as part of your maintenance plan with a client if you're using WordPress by offering backup, migration, all those kinds of things all inside this one tool. Now, when you have more than one site going on with updates and backups and all those kinds of things, it makes sense to have some way in which you can combine all of those sites together and easily monitor, manage, and update and do all the things that you need to do in one centralized location without having to log into 25, 30, 50, 100 sites. For that, I would recommend MainWP. Again, I've been using MainWP for several years myself as a kind of centralized location to manage all mine and my client sites. The other thing that's cool is that they've recently brought out a link with Atarim. So if you want to connect the two up together and you want to monitor the status of any kind of ongoing client work using both platforms, you can do that inside MainWP. There's also plenty of other links with things like uh, WP Vivid Backup and so on. So it's really, really a good way of being able to combine and connect all those things together to make your life super, super easy. And there we go. There's a huge amount of totally free tools to help you or anyone you may know get up and running creating websites for clients. Or if you're already doing that and looking for ways of using free tools to expand your skill set, to offer additional tools and features and things like that to your clients, then you've also got a great list inside you. As always, all the links to not only everything I've covered will be in the description, but also links to videos that I've covered these tools in more detail so you can see exactly how to use some of them without having to spend a huge amount of time getting stuck in and trying to learn everything for yourself. They'll all be linked in the description below. As always, I do welcome your feedback. Have, have I missed anything here? Is there anything you think I should take a look at? Let me know in the comments section. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care. Thank you.